Shalom Rastafari. Let's touch on this um Ayasafe thing that some um I don't know if it's a subscriber or just a troll or whoever. Um one name uh one whose screen name is okay here this has to come in again. All right, here we go. Here we go. Get this get this screen more front and center, all right? So we saw this pic. If you've seen the last vid, we saw this pic up there when we were looking up what this Iosophy that certain certain unstable and unlearned uh, who called himself Rastafari promoting more than his majesty's Bible and more than the gospel of him, the good news of his imperial majesty. Because sometimes we wonder, right, sometimes we wonder where do these strange ideas about Rastafari really come from? Where do they, um, to use the word his majesty said, um, where do they emanate from? You know, because even though we don't deal with that emanation philosophy, you know where it comes from? It comes from such associations like right here. Now, this is a uh, one, uh, some minister of the gospel, Walter Robinson II, who says some very interesting things right here. He says down here, he says, as a result, speaking about Rastafari, many remain leery and respond negatively toward them, even though many are honest, speaking of the Rastafari hard work and family oriented and charitable. I have also discovered that some of them are not racist as many of those were in the early stages of the movement. But racist? Okay. And they were in a very racist society. Let's understand that. But anyway, they say unfortunately many Rastafarians are violently antagonistic toward the gospel. No, we we have not noticed that in our ministry that um, many are antagonistic towards all the counterfeit, all the error. It's like once bitten, twice shy. It's like you, you fooled me once and shame on me, you fooled me twice. And, well, you know, fooled, you can't be fooled again, basically, like even Bush said, right? But the author goes on and says, in June of 1992, my family and I personally discovered this when we preached in the village of Windward, for the first time, there were two Rastafarians present who immediately made their hatred for our message known. If there was ever a time I experienced fear for the cause of Christ, that was it. However, God is faithful, and we now have a good relationship with these same men, and also many other Roman Catholics in the village as well, PTL. Well, I guess praise the Lord, right? PTL probably. Um, please pray for us as we continue to reach out to Rastafarians with the gospel. This is Walter Robinson the second, right? Now, this particular page, let me just show you this pic right here again, right? This particular page, actually, if we bring it to the top, was um, named, uh, let's, let's show you the top of this right here so you can see this from the very top. Here we go. It's, a, it's on a site, Walk With Men, right? Provocative, insightful, encouraging, informative. And it's a blog. It's a blog spot out there, Walk um, With Men, right? So it has a lion there, right? And it was posted Tuesday, the 6th of October, 2009. And what caught our attention, since we've been on this particular subject matter, I think this individual over here, Let's see if we can scroll it over a little bit. This individual over here in the corner with his uh, an Asian wife or something like that, Michael uh, uh, Cully or someone like this, is is him who wrote this. Is like a fellow Christian, so on and so on. But you even notice that they're out there, you know, um, not just commenting on Facebook and posting other people's stuff and arguing about nonsense, but they're out there ministering. You understand? They're out there putting out, you understand, their opinion. You understand? And too many of us allow certain people to misrepresent us, and we all recognize that that's not what we really are about. That's not what the King of Kings really teaches us. Till we have ones and ones saying that Rastafari are antagonistic to the gospel instead of to the, the, to the counterfeit, to the man of perdition, to Caesar Borgia's, to the the, the the 
white supremacist woolly lynchism. You see that that never comes up among these good Christians. They can't look at all the truth. They like to gloss over that. Yovas, but yet when little things happen in their community, they make a big thing out of it. All right, but look at this article right here. Iosipe and Rastafarianism. What? Anyway, Iosipe. So we saw this article right here, two articles. It was they, they're, they're trying to link Iosipe, right, or Iosipe, whatever, right, which is a book. Right, written in 1880 by an American dentist. Mm -hmm. We showed you his pick in the last vid, right? Basically, some white man, some European, right? Some European who had a walk in experience, right? He claimed that it was the result of automatic writing. That means when you allow your body to be taken over by uh, spirits. Right? Um, demonic entities, basically, right? The prophets didn't do automatic writing, but these people, they'd be lying, right? Dictated to him by spirits in a trance. In this trance, he wrote the entire book on a very early typewriter, possibly the first such book ever written on a machine. You know, now they start to hype it. You know, now, now it's, like, it's like making a movie or something on a TV show, right? Um, the spirits were very prolific, course, these demonic entities have been around for a long time, right? Aasipe is about four-fifths the size of the King James Bible and more than twice the size of the Book of Mormon. Other texts archived at sacred texts authored via automatic writing during the 19th century include, they say, the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ and Clothed with the Sun. All right, now that's another issue right there. When we check it and match it with the Bible. Now, this whole Asipe, it appeared in the context of the spiritualist movement of the Victorian predecessor of the New Age channeling and past life regressions. Regressions, right? Regressions. All right, really spiritual retardations. It has similarities to theosophy. In other words, Helen... Petrova Blavatsky and that whole emanation thing that Hala Selassie warned us about aboard the Canada Royal Train. You remember Rastafari? That's the one where they say that his master denied being Christ and Jesus, and he never even said Jesus and Christ, right? It's a translator or the narrator that says all that stuff. But anyway, go check it out on your own time. And it says, and strangely enough, to be rumored science fiction, Scientology mythology, which of course has no relationship whatsoever to Aosophy or its adherents. Aosophy inspired a radically different set of spiritual beliefs called faithism. Faithism, which has a small following even today. The faithists do not consider Aosophy the literal truth, but instead they find inspiration in its many ethical and spiritual passage. In other words, they can freestyle what it says. Because it's so general, you understand? If we don't talk about Chat Yat Sin or the atonement of Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior. In fact, it says that Yeshua never existed, right? Now, we know there's a Jesus, a blonde hair, blue eyes, Caesar Bogiers that never existed, but we, we um, bear witness to the true Adonai, Yehoshua, right? Now, they, they go on to talk about the Asipe Bible has similar quotes inspired from the Holy Bible inspired or just copied, right? Believing in many gods and goddesses and lords, several resurrected gods and higher and lower heavens, and accepting many different philosophies such as Mohammedanism and Buddhism. You, you understand what's going on here? Now this other passage right here just goes in some further. There are 13 prophets spread around the earth's countries, including Abraham, Moses, Brahma, Buddha, Thor, Apollo, Osiris. You could tell what, you know, you could tell what, 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 what the Europeans were up to at this time because the true revelation of Christ and his kingly character is about to be revealed. You know what I'm saying? It's interesting when you look at the revelation when it speaks about, you know, the appearance of that king, you know, or of the lion of the tribe of Judah and what happens around that same time. Right when the kingdom is declared, and that's also when the heavens rejoice, 
but the woe to the earth because these angels have come down. Now, these angels came down, and first they sent before them their false prophets. Now, of course, some of the things that they say in there, of course, will have some ring of truth, right? Now, this talks about some Jehovah, right, which shows that whoever wrote this would not say the I am God because in very simple Hebrew, Yahweh, if what they're saying is Yahweh instead of the Germanic Jehovah, Jehovah, Yahweh, and all that Vivet, like Avraham, or that's Ashkenaziism, right? They would know that it means he is. Now it goes on to talk about um, different countries, different nations, but we saw, we saw this was interesting down here, right, where it says the Iosophe has been added to continually and updated into modern times. So who, who is adding to it, right? Who is adding to this? Mm-hmm. You want to take a guess? Right? Who's adding to this, right? This belief is most prominent, they say, in Ethiopia. What belief? This belief is most prominent in Ethiopia, where they believe that Osiris was the Messiah and reincarnated God and also reincarnated as Rastafari. Have they asked any Ethiopians about this lately? I mean, we've checked the books going to the time of Lich Teferi and even before in English and Amharic and even some in Gutters, we haven't seen that uh, be lie east, but then they immediately segue right here into a Wikipedia of Rastafarianism. You know what I mean? And see, we allow this stuff to go on. And for all that we're learning, you know what I'm saying, we, we never get up the spiritual balls, you know what I'm saying, to get out there you understand, and to, and, and, and to bang for the king of kings. In other words, to put out information out there. You understand, you know, to instead of just, you know, you know, the Facebook thing is good, but there's a lot of y'all, I, I don't know what it is. You, you, are y'all still under the curse? Are y'all truly free? You understand? Have you listened to the teachings of his imperial majesty? Have you accepted Yeshua HaMoshiach as the king of kings teaches? Right? And then they go into the Selassie thing. You know, every time they go into the Selassie thing, we should rebuke them. You know what I'm saying? That's not his name. And if you know anything about him, Hark or good as you would know that. You know, because you cannot go into the royal court saying that. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, let's recognize, yes, some of the elders may not have known, but we don't have any excuse. So they have this page here that we noticed, and it has a lot of, a lot of um, um, some true, some conflicting information. And then they try to point out right here something was interesting, like when when um you know when uh we speak about let's see the King of Kings, they try to bring in their European eschatology, right down here. They say that Rastafarians have all, have not only misinterpreted Psalm 87 when we said um this man is born there. But they don't go into that to show how it's misinterpreted. It's, it's mis what? It's misinterpreted. They don't. They don't go into that. So what does it mean when it says Ethiopia? This man was born there. What does that mean? Who was born there? See, they're silent just like that. But they'll say we misinterpreted because it doesn't fit into their paradigm. You understand? Know Remember, we're talking about a lot of the counterfeit eschatology. That's basically prophecies. A fancy word they use in. In, in Christendom, it's called eschatology. It's basically another way of saying prophecy. But they don't say prophecy, so when it doesn't happen, you can't call them false eschatologists. You see what I'm saying? If you did, they'll, they'll shrug their shoulders. So really, it's another way of saying prophecy. But they say that we misinterpreted Psalm 87, but they never actually say how. Right? They say that the Lord shall count when he writeth up the people. This, each one singled out, was born there. Was born where? Then it says, the Lord shall count when you write up the people that this man was born there. Bearing in mind that italicized words were added by the translators to hopefully clarify the passage. This verse could actually read. So is that could uh, 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 should or is it a could? Or we could say would. You know what I'm saying? That the Lord shall count when you write up the people that this, right, that this, then they put in, in their own brackets, not italics. You, you see the slickness that they, that they use to confuse the already confused, right? The Rastafarians have not only, they say, 
misinterpreted Psalm 87. They have not misinterpreted it. They have not gone deep enough in it because they have not gone to the Amharic, the Metaf Kedus, and the Gutas, and the true roots of Rastafari, but they have not misinterpreted the basic plain meaning. They have also, this author goes on, overlooked the other scriptural references to the bodily return of the Messiah. How can we? You know what I'm saying? This is referring to the Lord's coming at Armageddon, not the catching away to take place at least seven years earlier. This is their own, what they call dispensationalism. And if you study some of the theology, you'll see that there's a whole thing about dispensationalism that's also there, right? Um, these passages indicate Messiah returned to earth at the Mount of Olives. It does not say that. That's what's interpreted. And look over those texts. Look over those interpretation. They go back to the great disappointment. That's when a whole group of white folks would listen to one of their white preachers and they sold everything and they waited and waited for the Lord to come. And then that's what really turned a lot of people off to Christianity, to the Bible, to the religion. They'd be doing that a lot. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's part of the, the wiles of the devil. You know what I'm saying? Even up in the so-called Christian church. And if you look at Revelation, it says that a lot of the churches would be, there would be a great apostasy, all right, in the latter days. And the times of the Gentiles are the latter days. One such passage, and they go into this passage here, right, and, you know, then they try to say, okay, the Rastafarians, um, they basically, it says, lastly, um, they talk about the dreadlocks, and that's what we kind of wrap around right here to the original point. And the highlight point was right here, where he said, unfortunately, many Rastafarians are violently antagonistic toward the gospel. Instead of saying that as it is, that many are violently antagonistic towards the whitewashed Jesus or Caesar Bogiers, because everyone knows, if they're honest, that that's a counterfeit. Caesar Bogiers, he is the son of Pope Alexander VI, and he became the image of the European Jesus Christ. His sister became the image for the white Mary, so-called Virgo Mary. And their illegitimate child, Rodrigo, became the image for, um, for uh, uh, the baby Jesus. I, I mean, what, what a sickness. And you never hear them mention any of that. All right? So Iosipe, Iosipe really has very little to really do right, with Rastafari proper, right, with Rasta, only the fringes with ones who are just saying Rasta for I, you understand, they're saying Rasta, you understand, as though, and they're making their own meanings, making up their own kind of meanings, can be easily hoodwinked and bamboozled. And brothers or sisters, if, if, you, if you've gotten into that, please repent, listen to the teaching of his majesty. If we say his majesty is, is God and he's our father, our Abba, it behooves us, all right, to, to, to read, to listen to his teaching and to do all in our power to pray and be diligent and to study to really see what he means. Don't fail. It's, it's a test, but it's not a test towards evil like Satan's test. No, it's a test towards the blessing. He puts before us this day blessing and curse. All right, either we listen to the teaching of his majesty and go to his roots, or we get caught up in this new age ism and schism. And unfortunately, a lot of ones are all caught up in it, Yovas, and, and you can see the chaos, Yovas, and you can even see the demonic activity when you speak about Yeshua or you speak about the gospel. You know, every brother or sister that we have ministered the Wengel to, Yovas, and who has received it, they might not have accepted everything at first, but once we show them the teaching of his majesty, what his majesty says concerning Yeshua HaMoshiach, what his majesty has done with the Metaf Kedus, you know, saying, giving us our own root, as Theo Pulse even said, I discovered a version that's not the King James Version and is definitely not the Iosape or, or, or Ofe Bible. It's not the Ofe Bible. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who, who, who basically um, was demon-possessed, you know what I'm saying, was a part of a whole spiritualistic movement that Haile Selassie specifically warned us about. When he was asked about being the return Christ, he says, I've heard of this idea. I've spoken to many Rastafarians. I made it very plain to them that I'm a man immortal. I'll be um, replaced by the oncoming generation and that they should never make a mistake in pretending 
or assuming that the, that that man is emanated from a deity. And you know what all these false kind of new ageism and schisms have that's different than the roots of Rastafari and the teaching of his imperial majesty? That very same philosophy. That very same philosophy. Stop getting into things because it's easy. You understand? It allows you to continue to make up stuff. You understand? And be undisciplined and therefore remain to be unblessed and stay under the curse. You understand? And, and vulnerable to the terrors of the Lord. Because a lot of these demons that people are channeling and everything else is setting them up. Don't you understand we're in the last times of this age, not the last times of the entire heaven and earth, but of this particular age, this particular dispensation. And the king of kings, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, is that sign of the true and the living God. So repent, brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? I mean, repent, you know, just, you, brother, you know, just to even get into this, you know what I'm saying, would be even a series of videos. We already went over some basic stuff right here, just some basic stuff. We pray that the Holy Spirit gives you wisdom, you know what I'm saying, to receive and accept the truth of the King of Kings and his Christ. We are not antagonistic to the good news, to the true gospel. But see, that's the key word right there, ilnet, to the truth. Because our Adonai, our master says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I am Wendem Yadon, reporting for the line of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty, broadcasting on Ethiopian World Net, case of emergency 911, and Rastafari, uh, Bath Sickle. So subscribe today. Shalom.